there's a solid chance that the reason you're watching this video today is because you wanna get more confident and consistent lifting up this front wheel. And I would almost guarantee that the reason why you're struggling is that you're thinking about this process all wrong. In today's video, we're gonna go exactly into that. I'm gonna help you understand what you need to be doing. We're gonna break this thing down. And by the end of the video, not only are you gonna be more consistent and confident, I'm also gonna teach you how to move your front wheel left and right so you have better wheel placement as you're riding, which is only gonna make you a more confident rider. The number one reason why people have a hard time lifting their front wheel off the ground is that they think the entire movement comes from lifting up on their handlebars, and that's completely backwards. Now, don't get me wrong, the handlebars do play a minor role in getting the front wheel off the ground, but the real action is actually happening way down here at the bottom of the bike. This piece right here where your cranks connect is called the bottom bracket, and where your center of gravity interacts with the bottom bracket is what makes so much of the difference happen when it comes to getting the front wheel off the ground and a lot of the other movements that your bike will make while it's riding. So your center of gravity is right between your hips and where you are and where that center of gravity is compared to the bottom bracket is what's really making the effort. Once you establish the relationship in your head of where your center of gravity is over the bottom bracket, how you're unweighting and weighting the bike in certain areas, everything else is gonna open up for you. Visualize this for just a second. If your center of gravity is in front of the bike center of gravity, it's gonna make it really hard to lift up the front wheel. If your center of gravity is behind the bike center of gravity, it's gonna make it a lot easier to lift up. What people are getting wrong when it comes to lifting up their front wheel is that they have their center of gravity in front of the bike center of gravity, and they're only using their arms to try to pull the front wheel off the ground. What we need to be doing is unweighting and getting behind the bike center of gravity so it makes it easy for that front wheel to lift up. And we're gonna go into some unweighting movements to really try to understand. But before we even do that, having this understanding of this is where the bike center of gravity is and I need to be behind it to make it easy for this part to come up, that's like a huge chunk of understanding how this whole process works. Hey, one quick thing before we get into the unweighting thing, I just wanna tell you that you're probably not alone in having a hard time getting your front wheel off the ground. And you know, you stumbled across this channel and this tutorial video specifically, but there are a lot of other people who haven't found it yet. And one thing that you can do to kind of pay it forward is just hit the like button. That seems to get this out to a lot more people and I would appreciate it a lot. All right, now let's get into the unweighting technique. We're gonna talk about unweighting the bike, and specifically, we're talking about unweighting the front half of the bike and really weighting the back half of the bike. It's almost like a teeter-totter or a lever, if you will. I'm putting all of my weight back here behind the bottom bracket in order to make the front end really light and come up super easy. So that's really kind of what we're working on here when we talk about unweighting. At this point, we've had kind of the mental unlock of where we need to be on the bike. We need to be behind the bottom bracket, and that's really what's gonna be the game changer for everyone that's been struggling with this whole thing. But to go a step further and talking through the unweighting process, we're actually gonna be dumping a lot of weight onto the back of the bike. And I call this the sink because I'm sinking into the rear tire, almost sitting down on the rear tire. So I'm thinking about shooting my body back and down I use this a lot in my trials rider when I'm jumping the back wheel because I want to put all of my body's weight right over this rear hub. This next element's gonna pull the whole thing together for us and get that front wheel off the ground. And really what it's gonna do is gonna put my body in the right position. And what it is, I call it the row. And so you make a rowing motion with your handlebars. And what that does, the first half of it, you're pushing your body into the position over the back tire. And then as you pull on the handlebars, you kneel down into the back tire and that's gonna make your front wheel come up because you've now weighted your back wheel so heavily with your body that the front wheel lifts up. One additional modification to this movement that I've seen people do is that they push down on the wheel, push into their suspension a little bit and then do the row. And that kind of gives them a little bit of the rebound to help get that front wheel movement happening. So if you're really struggling on getting that row moving, if you can't get that front wheel off, if your body weight isn't enough to really make that back end heavy, try pushing down on your suspension and then going into the row. Now it's time to get on your bike to start putting this into practice. And there's three things I wanna tell you before you do exactly that. Number one, the speed you should be rolling when you're practicing this is like a slow walking speed. Don't go too fast or you can get out of control pretty easily. Number two, cover your rear brake. If you really get that front wheel off the ground, there's a chance you can loop out and you just wanna be able to grab that rear brake in case the front wheel comes up just a little bit too high. 
And number three, and probably the piece of advice I give out the most is to really exaggerate that movement. Exaggerate how deep you're sinking into the bike. Exaggerate how much you're rowing with the handlebars. And something that really helps a lot of people is actually to film themselves doing it so they can see, because it might feel like you're exaggerating a lot, but you might find out that there's a lot more room to go. So just really think about exaggerating those movements when you're practicing this. Just remember, practice makes progress. We gotta do everything we can to keep these confidence gremlins at bay. Be consistent in how you're practicing, and now that you know what's actually happening on the bike to get that front wheel off, it's gonna be a lot easier to be confident and consistent. Now that we've got that done, we can actually move on to this next step, which is moving the front wheel around, which is gonna be a huge bonus for you in your confidence as a rider, in your bike handling abilities, all the technical stuff that's coming your way. This is gonna be a huge help, so let's dig right into that. Front wheel movement. Okay, now that you've got the front wheel lift locked in, which you should by this point, don't move on until you have that totally confident and good to go. But let's talk about moving this front wheel back and forth. Now, why would you wanna have this skill? Wheel placement is such an important part of riding and especially technical stuff. So how you ride through technical sections, where you're putting that front wheel as you're riding through those little bits, but also this is a massive unlock for real tight corners like switchbacks and stuff like that. To be able to pick up the front wheel and put it somewhere else from a slow or dead stop kind of position, huge unlock. So we're gonna go into exactly that right now. Now, when you learned how to lift that front wheel off the ground, we had you go at like a walking pace real slow. And what you should be able to do is slow down to an almost stop and still do that movement. Because what we really wanna do is the less speed we have, the easier this kind of is to do. You don't wanna be carrying a bunch of speed in this way and trying to go that direction. So the more you can slow it down, the better. You wanna basically come to almost a stop. And in fact, I like to lock up the back wheel when I'm doing this before I start making the movement. Not entirely necessary, but helpful. You're gonna lift up that front wheel. And remember, your weight, even though we're moving our front wheel from point A to point B, your weight still needs to be back behind the center of gravity of the bike, behind the seat. Exact same process that we've done with the front wheel lift. And actually, the further back on this one, the easier it's gonna to be to pivot around. What you're going to do is essentially throw yourself off balance. And the way that you do that is by leading with the shoulder in the direction you wanna go, but also opening up the knee in that direction. So you open up your knee away from the bike. And as your knee, hip, and shoulder move in that direction, as you lift your front wheel off, it's gonna kinda of throw you off balance. And you pick up the front wheel and put it down to rebalance yourself. That's essentially what you're doing when you're pivoting and why we can pivot as far as we can are really two factors. Number one, we're lifting up the front wheel a little bit higher than we normally would. And number two, we're throwing ourselves way off balance. So if you wanna go just a little bit, you don't have to lift your front wheel too high. You don't have to throw yourself off balance. If you wanna make a really big turn on that front wheel, you gotta lift that front wheel higher and really throw yourself off balance. This takes a lot of practice to get to, but you just start small. You start with a small redirect, and then you try to see how much further you can go with moving that. If you're trying to troubleshoot this one, a thing that I would definitely recommend is to make sure that you're actually using your shoulder and your knee and your hip to really throw yourself off balance. If you're lifting the front wheel up, but the wheel isn't moving in either direction, it's likely something that's happening with your body. Are you far enough back on the bike? Are your knees and shoulders pulling far enough away from the center line of the bike to move you in that direction, to throw you enough off balance to make it work. A lot of times people just need to see what they look like on camera. So set up your iPhone and just film yourself doing it and see if you can even notice that you're doing it. A lot of times when you're on the bike, you feel like you're making this big exaggerated movement and then you see the video of it and you're like, nah, not really. So hold up that iPhone, have somebody film you doing it and make sure that your shoulders and your hips are doing exactly what you think they're doing because nine times out of 10, that's the one thing that's holding you back. So this technique is actually a part of a video that I made called the five tricks you should practice in a parking lot before you ride. And if you wanna see what the other four are, there's a video right here. If you're kind of digging this whole trials vibe and you wanna learn even more about pivoting your wheels around and growing from there, there's a whole playlist of trial skills you can learn right here. 